Are you wondering how to set up basic backing tracks optimized for a live gig using Ableton? Here's how I do it. Hello and welcome to my channel. Um, so glad you're here. Today, what I'm going to be going over, as you could probably tell by the description, is how I set up my um, Ableton Live DAW system, how I set it up for live performance. Um, I have gotten a few questions about how I use it live, and this is how I use it. So I set up a basic, uh, I did a basic setup. I have a quick, uh, just kind of a generic song. I actually called it generic song. Um, just kind of set up here. Oh, uh -oh, wait. Yep. Perfect. So I got this generic song just kind of set up so I can show you how I set up things. Now, the first thing, um, that I do when setting up, you know, something for live performance, first thing I do is I convert all of my MIDI tracks into audio tracks. What that does is it saves my computer's resources. Um, when you are playing live, you don't want this number here, this percentage number in Ableton Live, it shows you how much CPU power you're using. You don't want that number going really high. Uh, if your computer is working really hard, the chances of your program freezing or the chances of your a crash or something like that or something going wrong or whatever, the chances of something going wrong are a lot higher when your uh, computer is working really, really hard. It takes a lot more power to process VSTs and stuff like that than it does to just play audio clips. So what you want to do is you want to transfer everything from MIDI to audio. And the way you do that is you just right click on your channel. You can actually select all of your channels at the same time. And you would click here where it says freeze track. After you do that, when you right click it again, after the track is frozen, it gives you the option to select a parameter that's called flatten. Once it flattens it, which it's going to render it, once it flattens it, it converts all of the MIDI into audio. And that's what you want because it saves you, saves you power. Uh, the next thing I do is I set up buses. I set up bus tracks. So if you look here, I've got a guitar bus, a drum bus, a piano bus, and a bass bus. These buses, what a bus is, is this one guitar bus track controls these three guitar channels. And what that does for me is it allows me to control all three of these with just this one channel. If I want to control the volume, if I want to bring down just the guitars, I have one slider, slide one slider down, and all of the guitars will go down. If I want to add a, uh, let's say a chorus, if I want to add a chorus to it, I can add a chorus to the bus, and now every single guitar has chorus added to it. So. It just makes it a lot neater, makes it a lot less complicated. You could literally have 32 tracks or 40 tracks or 100 tracks and just have six or seven buses and you will be able to control all of your tracks with just a few knobs and sliders. So you may be asking the question, how do you set up a bus track? Now it's very simple. What you're going to do is you're going to come over here, you're going to right click, you're going to add a new track, insert audio track. Okay, now, now we have an audio track that's called audio one. And now you can just basically take, let's say this guitar channel track here. I can say from the audio, go to the audio two, and I could come down here and route it to audio one. So now the output for this channel is going to go to this channel and I will change this channel here, the, where the audio from, I'm going to change that to no input and I'm going to set the monitor to in. So now it's going to monitor any channels that come into it. And that's what it would do. And then I can control whatever channels come into it just by using the parameters on this one channel. So uh, it just makes things really, really easy. And I'm gonna just switch this back really quickly. Um, change it back to guitar bus. And then we're going to get rid of this. All right, so now we're back to where we were. So that's what I do as I set up my bus tracks. And then I just use the bus tracks to control all the tracks in my, in my session there. So uh, then the next thing, and this, this is why it's so important. This is why I use buses is because the next thing I do is I map everything to my keyboard. I never want to be using my mouse, my keyboard and mouse and stuff like that when I'm on stage. So I could, you know, technically speaking, um, this row, if I play this row using these scenes over here, I could click here and it's gonna control all the scenes. Click here, it goes to the next part of the song click here goes to the next part of the song but that's not really what I do when I'm playing live if I'm my key hands and stuff on the keys and stuff like that 
you don't want to do that so you want to map your controls onto your onto your controller keyboard that's what the controller is for so um ableton makes it very very easy to do that once i click this button that says midi all i literally have to do is i come over here and if i click this here and hit a pad i'm gonna just say yes that changes it to that pad come over here click this right hit this pad and now it's mapped to those pads so now when i turn the midi off and I hit the button now it's being controlled by the pads and so that's how i do that so i control those with the with the pads so i control all of my scenes using my pads and then as far as these bus channels are concerned this is what i want to control i want to control my bus channels with my sliders so you come over here you hit the midi and then if i wanted to control this slider here then you move it up and down and now it's going to control that and then you I already I already have it set up but but literally so these these four channels one two three four are going to be these four sliders one two three four these um um these mute buttons here you click them and then i've routed them to these buttons here one two three four so i can mute tracks just by hitting these just by hitting these four buttons now if i wanted to control something like the send here which is going to send uh re send it to the reverb here so we get reverb on the channel i can just turn the knob since i clicked it now i turn the knob now on my guitar bus come over here hit the midi on my guitar bus let's just hit play real quick if i turn this knob you end up with reverb on just your guitars And you can literally map any of the controls however you want them to however you want onto your computer onto your keyboard surface so when i'm playing and whatnot when i'm playing live i just hit the button when the next part of the song comes up i hit the next pad the next part of the song comes up i hit the next pad if i need to mute something if i just muted the guitars mute something else you just mute the drums just the bass is playing, drums back on. And of course I can control the volumes individually. And so anyway, that's how I do a quick setup in Ableton Live for playing live. So I can control all of my tracks and whatnot just using these buses. And uh, I control all of my scenes by using my pads and it works, it works well for live. So that's my basic setup. I hope this has been helpful to you and um, you guys have a good day.